Yeah, sure. I mean, obviously, uh, another good win for us. Um, you know, I think Wake is a really high-powered offensive team. They made some very difficult shots. I thought, you know, we'll go back and look at the tape, and they were contested, uh, many of them. But, you know, give our guys credit. I thought when we need to pick up our energy, coach kind of challenged them, come out of a timeout, really pick up our energy defensively. I thought that led to uh, a couple of charges, uh, moving screen that Jaquan was really guarding the ball hard, and, you know, those were big momentum swings for us. I thought he was, uh, he's been back to, he settled a little bit still, but I think he's been back to attacking, uh, getting to the basket. He got to the free throw line a, a number of times. And his pressure defensively for us has been a key, you know, throughout this little stretch we've had of, you know, winning five of six in the, in the close one at Florida State. So, you know, on paper, it doesn't always show up, but I think his effort defensively has been huge. And that's so, so, sort of be allowing him now to get going offensively. You know, again, I, I think it's his focus has been on the defensive end, and that's allowed him to, you know, start to play maybe a little bit more free of mind, more clear of mind offensively, and, and that's led to him, you know, sort of playing his game, getting in the paint, getting to the free throw line, uh, getting some nice layups and floaters, which is, you know, what he's really skilled at. That's one of the things that, that Jim said, you know, when Bruce got hurt, was that that's not a player that can be replaced by right. the guy. Right, yeah. Yeah. The way you guys have been able to handle that in that sense that somebody is always willing to, to take that. You know, that yeah. That yeah, I mean, I, it's funny. I, I was looking at the uh, Virginia Tech game on the plane, and, um, you know, the stat came up about Bruce, and it said he's averaging 11 points, seven rebounds, four assists, and there's only one. One, uh, one of five guys at the high major level that are doing that. So where some people might say, well, he's not shooting a three great, you know, maybe you're bringing a better three-point shooter for him. But then you look at a guy who's putting up those type of numbers across the game and defending your, the best player on the other team, he, he really is irreplaceable in that, in that sense. I think the great thing about it is the guys that have come in have played within themselves. In other words, they're not trying to do things that they can't do to make up for it. You're sort of limitless within yourself. That that's what those guys are doing. So that's where you see Sam Wardenberg. You know, he becomes a threat for a, on the perimeter. You know, he makes makes threes, three of them tonight. One huge one at Virginia Tech. He's playing within himself, and it's really helping us. And I think that's been the case for for each guy. I don't think anybody's really trying to go outside of themselves to to contribute. Can you talk a little more about Sam, uh, Coach? Sure. Renega told us that he had struggled a little with his confidence in December, and then. You guys kind of have been talking about sure. playing more and more, it seems like. Yeah, I mean, he, he's, you know, I think early in the year, like most freshmen, um, they're, they're trying to figure out where they fit in. I thought he was trying a little bit too much to be a playmaker, uh, you know, a guy who's trying to make some plays. He is a very good instinctive passer. Uh, he was trying to put it on the ground and, and, and try to make those great passes, but uh, the size, the physicality, the speed of the game at this level sometimes can, can speed you up and force you into some mistakes. And I think now he's playing much more within himself, and you look at the way he's, you know, he's defending, he's rebounding, he's making open shots, he's made his free throws. Um, he did have a nice, I think he had a nice assist tonight on a, on a drive to the middle that he kicked out to Lonnie. But um, it's sort of starting where he, he's, you shrink your game a little bit to, to allow it to be the best it can be. And I think that's, that's where he is right now. Chris, talk a little bit about following the injury to Bruce. You guys have kind of gone to eight and now nine. You play Rodney Miller yeah. uh, a few minutes and, and Rod Rodney's given us good minutes in practice. Like coaches always, you know, we, I think we've all said like, hey, we got to give Rodney an opportunity here, and, and particularly against a guy like Moore tonight. Uh, we, we prepared to do it against Kerry Blackshear at Virginia Tech. In fact, we thought Rodney gave us good minutes in the first half, but if you remember, Blackshear didn't play much in the second half, so we didn't really get a chance to go back to him. Uh, but, you know, I, I think there are certain teams that we play against where Rodney can be an asset because of his size. There are also other games where we can't play as big as a team because the other team plays small. You know, Virginia Tech's a good example. They're playing, you know, Chris, Chris Crawlick at the five, um, Horn at the five. They're just playing much smaller. It's hard for us to play three big guys in those games. Depth has really emerged now for the basketball game. Yeah, I mean, some of it is Bruce being out and, and having to go with somebody else. I, I did think there was a stretch that we had talked about early in the conference play where we were playing guys a lot of minutes. Uh, you know, guys north of 35 minutes, Amp was playing a lot of minutes, and we're, you know, trying to figure out ways to play 
uh, maybe another guy and just sometimes guys will play a lot better at 32 minutes than they'll play at 36 minutes or 31 minutes rather than they'll play at 37 minutes. What can you say about Lonnie Walker? It seems like every game he was kind of being held in the second half and then all of a sudden he comes out with 19 at the end of the day. Yeah, I think, you know, he um, he's another guy. I think he's really playing within himself. Uh, the problem for us sometimes is he's he's got a lot to his game. He can he can do a lot of things, and sometimes we got to edge him on to to you know maybe be a little bit more of a driver at times and get to the free throw line. Or uh, but I but I think he's playing great defense. I, I I think every game that in the last seven or eight he's contested a shot and blocked it, and I think that shows his his activity, his his defensive reach, his athleticism, and that's, that's something that's very impressive to us. Uh, and again, he's another guy that I think. He's starting to play great defense, and it's leading to, you know, playing with a very clear mind offensively, playing very uh, confidently, stepping up, making shots. Uh, we're wanting him to get to downhill a little bit more and get to the basket because he's very capable of that. He had a couple of good ones tonight. And how about Chris Likes? I, I thought he I thought he played well. Uh, he he made a big three late. He made his free throws, which was key for us. We were subbing in and out there at the end of the game to uh, to get him to the free throw line. I don't know if he got to the free throw line there at, at that point, but he was another threat uh, to catch it and get to the free throw line. He, he's another guy. I thought he gave us a huge huge lift coming uh, coming off the bench uh, out of that timeout and really pressuring the ball. And that's the biggest thing we've told him is you know, continuing to be a pest because a lot of times guys with that size, they're either a tremendous pest or they're a liability. And he, he's been a pest at times and, and, and sometimes throughout the game, and, and it's been a big thing for us. On the road now Saturday, Chris, at DC, just Yeah, I mean, they're obviously um, there's such a good offensive team, so well coached offensively. Um, and the two guards, even Chapman even being the third guy, I mean, they're just – they present so many challenges as to how to defend them. Even if, uh, you know, I know they're not playing a ton of guys. There's not a lot of depth there. They're, they're, they're playing a lot of minutes. But in some ways, it's like, you know, that, that's just more time that those guys are on the floor and they scare you because they, you know, I know Robinson had 46 last night and Bowman's had 30-point games throughout his career. And uh, Chapman's been a great third guy for them to, to make shots and play off those two guys. So I think it'll be a, a, a tremendous challenge going up there and, and finding ways to defend them and make them miss shots because, um, you know, they're just very, very high octane. And I think Jim Christian is as good as anybody in our league and in, in sort of, you know, picking on, people defensively when, when he feels like he's got an advantage and they're difficult to, to defend. And, and for our freshmen, it'll be the first time that they get a chance to defend the team that, you know, the way they move, they, they play with tremendous pace and, um, and great creativity offensively. So it'll, it'll be a challenge. What do you tell a guy like Chris, freshman, obviously electric, when he sometimes goes into those zones where he might get a little too flashy? Or <laughs> you take him out. You take him out of the game. We, we took him out. <laughs> Yeah. Obviously he's talented, but in those moments, what do you guys kind of tell him to just kind of keep him, I guess, contained? Yeah, I, I think you, you, you don't want to punish a guy for being aggressive and, and being and, and being somewhat creative, which he's he's capable of. But at the same time, I think you, they also, as young players, got to understand the game. You know, we, we uh, I think at that point, uh, he had made a what may be a good pass. I think we'll have to watch the film to figure it out, the catchable pass or not. Um, but then, you know, that was a turnover. We sort of hadn't gotten a shot on goal in a while. Uh, they were scoring or giving up a lead. And then he sort of tries to flick a, a pass, you know, in transition that, that they – I don't know if they picked it off or it was close to being picked off, but they, they may have picked it off. So – I think it's more time and score and understanding, you know, what our team needs at that moment, particularly when you have the ball in your hands so much. Uh, and that's just those are teaching moments, and that was a teaching moment with Coach and Chris. What was the feeling when, when they came back back at you, you know, there in the second half? You know, it's still a lot of time. But sure. They, you know, they, stayed, they had you. Had to I think that they've been in a lot of games like that. I think, you know, their games have been close, even though their record doesn't, you know, doesn't reflect a lot of winning. They, they've been in a lot of close games. So I didn't think they were going to lay down. Um, and I think Coach challenged our guys to, to have a lot of energy defensively. I thought we could get ourselves going by playing great defense, um, and I think we did. And that was, I think it was 46-44 maybe at that point. We might have been going to the line to to tie it, and um, I thought our energy picked up defensively and it allowed us to get out in the open court. You know, that's always the best way to score is when you're not defended, right? When Chris steals it and pitches it ahead to Jaquan, and we, we had 
another turnover where we were able to, you know, uh, get the ball back, and that, that was key for us. One more question. Do you guys ever consider switching the zone? Yeah, we've played some zone. Um, you know, it's, it's sort of unique. We, we're, I think we're going into the game, we're 11th in the country in field goal percentage uh, or points per possession defense, and yet in league play we're like 7th, middle of the pack. So in the league games here, it's been a little bit more difficult um, partially because we're playing against really good offensive players. We have played some zone. Uh, against Pitt, we played some, and it worked very, very well. Against Virginia Tech, we gave up a lot of threes. Um, I don't know that with the team we have on, on the court, uh, in certain instances, are, do we have en enough length to be really effective in it? But then if you look at the lineup where we play Amp at the three, Sam at the four and, and one of the five men, and then we do have a little bit more size and length, and, and we've tried it, but it's not, it hasn't been something we've spent a ton of time on. All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you.